Okay, so if we all quickly just introduce ourselves. I'm Alan. I'm Jack Turner. Oh, hello. I'm Joe Pike. I'm Alexis Coleman. I'm Evelyn. Hi, I'm George. Hey, brilliant. So we've just had this second um, Young Somerset workshop. Um, how do people feel after having come out of that? Comfortable. Comfortable. Mm. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with Jack. Like a pair of shoes. Less concerned. Um, absolutely triggered. <laughs> <laughs> and not in the angry sense. <laughs> Any advance on triggered? What, as an evaluate? Or... No, no, I was... I was, I was... Oh, Hang right. on, what was that noise Evelyn made in response to triggered? <laughs> it sounded like a small, high-pitched bird. It's just deflating. <laughs> um... <laughs> That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a mess. Mark. <laughs> so I, I, we started off, but the first thing we did, we, he asked about being grateful. Now I've got to ask about this because I actually got distracted by a bunch of other students at this point. What happened? What, what was, how, how did he kind of phrase that? I mean, question? he didn't phrase it much differently from what you just said, to be honest. Oh, I did miss it then. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was mostly just talking about, like, aside the anxiety, what are we grateful for in life? Yeah. And we had a variety of different responses. My response was love, because we, whenever we go through anxiety, we always have support from family, friends, and everything like that. So we always, we always have love in our life. That was my response. So I'm very grateful for having love. That's nice. What else did everyone else? Because I hard... didn't answer that question. I did notice. <laughs> mm. Did you notice? Oh. I didn't what? answer because I thought that's a weirdly generalized question. And, yeah, that uh, that was that was way way too broad a subject to be talking about. There, are, I'm sure there's lots of things that I'm grateful for, but like, I I I couldn't really come up with a a, a straight answer that can, included everything that I was grateful for. How would I do that? You Some, at you... different points in life, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for everything. Mm -hmm. With that, no. <laughs> I think Joe, you broke up. Um, it, it's almost like it's like as you just said, it's like you end up not realizing how much you're grateful for when you've been yeah. asked a simple question. <laughs> and it's I don't know like if anyone else everything. did this. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else did this. Also, as soon as anyone asks me what I'm grateful for, I'm like, well, here are here is all the things I'm not grateful for. <laughs> And it just makes me feel worse. I'm like, oh, I should be grateful for things, but I'm not. I, d I don't necessarily do that, but I, I can't. When I'm asked to come up with examples of things, I just can't come up with examples of things. It's like when people ask you what, what your favourite song is, and then you, you, you've forgotten every song that you've ever listened to in your life. Um, yeah, it's a bit like that. It's also just joking. like listening to other people it? answer is just sometimes very depressing. It's like, ah, oh, you're grateful for that. God, I wish that was me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Why is everyone grateful for something? I'm grateful for things. Like, I'm grateful we have, like, um, healthcare and we have a uh, free education and I can go to school without getting shot and stuff like that. But also just, like, hearing people being, like... It's a very specific thing. <laughs> I'm grateful for all this like support. I'm grateful for like this and that. And I'm there like, yep, oh, cool. Don't have that. Don't have that either. And it just slowly gets very depressing by the time you get to the end of it. So it's like I don't even want to be grateful for any of this anymore. I know I, just, I should. Be. <laughs> I'm just I mean, tired. the only one I could think of was quite lame. It's that I'm grateful that I'm alive. But, you know, I think all of us are, are, are kind of alive at this point. So yeah, but considering I, I just went with the basic, I'm grateful for friends and family, and just thought, eh, at least I've contributed. I mean, that was just, it was a very general question, yeah. which had lots of answers, and there was no way to categorise all of those answers under one statement that you could say that you were grateful for. That says you an awful lot about the way you process information, Joe. Can I just say? You end up getting... <laughs> Great, um, okay. You end up getting, like... Um, you end up panicking. Even in a sense yeah. of you don't need to panic. You end up... Because you'll get... It's like, even in a, a safe place, you can say what you want. Mm. Even the fear of not being judged, you still feel like you're going to be judged either way. So it's yeah. like, what's the point? You're going to answer something. 
and this still is, get judged after. <laughs> this is very sensitive stuff that we're talking about here. And the well, fact that we don't know most of the people we're talking to very well, well we just kind of make you slightly nervous about yeah. talking about it. Like, all right? Am I the only one who finds these calls more relaxing than the actual call itself? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 this call is way more relaxing. In other words, this feels really safe. Yeah. What you say? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> talking to external people <laughs> adds a whole layer of, of new stuff to think about. Actually, to be fair, it, the lessons. Who could be judging out every word? You know. Although I was, like... <laughs> I, I was quite interested when he was talking about the the um. <sighs> give me, give me about two minutes. <laughs> okay, don't, don't worry, we're only, we're only making the show. CBT, we? CBT. Yes. I was quite interested when he was talking about that. My ears perked up. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed. I noticed. Could, quickly, quickly, what, what did he say CBT was? Um, this pen. Yeah. It was it was about it was about going from one end of a pen to the other end of a pen. It's your you thought process. You've got, to get, you've got to break out the pattern basically. I love that Joe. This pen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Wait, no, he didn't have that pen. He had the oh, yeah, pen was more like this. The pen was more like this. It's about going from here to here, but 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 actually going from here to here to here, rather than going from yeah. here to here. There you it go. It really confused me when he explained that like that because I've had it explained to me in a different way. And when he said it like that, I was like, wait, what is it? Not the thing I was thinking about. So I had to Google it to check. <laughs> what what did you? I mean, how would you correct that? Um, well, the way I was taught uh, when I was younger was um, you have a maze and that's how you go about doing stuff. And you, or if once you get to the end point, you just kind of remember that one route and you keep going down that one route and it's being prepared to take a right into the unknown away from the route that could do, do the thing you don't want to do instead of just keep following the same route. It's, it's still, you know, I can see that it's the same thing. It's yeah, just obviously like, a, a two minute one and one's a, but I, I like, I like your phrase that, that being prepared to take the right turn into the unknown. I think that to me yeah. is the big thing. It's quite terrifying. Often, there you go. And that's why quite often go. CBT is used, especially for anxiety, because it's about changing the patterns of thinking. It's about having actually, a set way of doing something and changing that into a different way. Um, actually, to be fair, when he was talking about the CBT thing, I actually saw do do that when I can't sleep because so much is on my mind. I actually saw sleep on the opposite side of the bed because it's your body's not used to that. And, you know, it, you know, your mind is so distracted because you're sleeping on the opposite side of the bed. And I actually found myself really comfortable. And I looked down at the stars and I fell asleep like a little baby. I just lay awake. <laughs> it's it's um, funny you should talk about I can get to sleep. It's, it's funny you should talk about sleeping because I was talking about sleeping to my parents the other day because I noticed that I do a weird thing wherever I am. So wh- wherever I am, I like to make sure that the bed is in the, in the corner of a room. Mm. So it's against two walls and then there's gaps the other side. We all do that. Right? And I always sleep no matter which way the bed is facing the wall. Yeah, mm. I do that like, as well. Because <laughs> I, I just moved rooms in my other room the wall was here, but, sorry, the wall was here and the bed was here. And I, I, and the pillow was like, that, that's that end. And I was sleeping facing that way, facing the wall. Now it's flipped and the wall's here, but I'm still sleeping at this end. And I, I sleep facing that way. It's almost a safe place as well. It's almost safe when you have, when you have like the corner of the bed, like you have an L shape because you can go against the wall. People also, during the night, you can you can look out, and there's only there's only two directions you have to monitor. Then, when you're looking out at night, because <laughs> the other two are just walls. It's kind of terrifying. People <laughs> have a tendency to sleep on the hand that is their dominant hand as well, because you can push yourself up quicker. Is the body reaction for sleeping on that side? Because mm-hmm. we used strange. to get really confused when people were studying it, um, why you would sleep in your dominant hand if you need to attack. It's so can push yourself up if something happens. Something See, that's happens weird because in the way I was sleeping in my old room when I was sleeping facing the wall, it was on my dominant hand. But now I've moved in here and I sleep facing the other way, facing the wall, 
I'm sleeping on this hand, which isn't my dominant hand. I feel so bad for Adam because this was about mental health, not about how no, no, we no, sleep. Still, this is, I'm seeing the link. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about me. There, uh, there's a link. Can you please oh, yes. explain the link? Okay. To well, us? the thing is, because right within the session, he he mentioned a whole set of things that you can actually do to kind of you know, ground yourself or stuff like that. And he was talking about distracting yourself. Can anyone remember what those things were? I'm notes. sure I do a number of those things. Yeah. Well, I've I think got that, notes. Is that cheating? Because because there, there was the Taking the cold shower, nice stuff. Rubber bands. Out. There was something yeah. to do yeah. with rubber bands. Yeah, oh, rubber I'm bands. running, running. Yeah. yeah. Fidgeting. Yeah. Blanket cocoon. Shaking. Whole... Basic stimming. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of them are actually related to stimming. You're absolutely right. But I think the main reason he's talking about those is when you've got these things, you're giving yourself something to almost distract yourself. Because, like we're saying, yeah, when that's what CBT does. It's almost it's it's a kind of way of kind of right. I've got this one process of doing things, and everything links into that. So, including where you've got your bed, how you're lying, how you're sleeping, the fact you got you know against all all that stuff, and that is that kind of that's the routine that your brain gets into, and it processes the same information all the time. And what we're talking about, you know, he's talking about, well, here's some different ways you can change elements of that routine, change elements of that pattern of thinking. Either, you know, for instance, like, you know, you've moved, you've moved the bed, so you're changing how you're doing it, but it's still going into that same thing because that's comfortable, that gives safety. What he's saying, some of the patterns of behavior you have can be an issue, and so here's some ways that you can distract yourself from that and actually change how you do it. Does that make sense? There was a distraction thing that he didn't mention that I was surprised of because it's like the one that I always get uh, sick of hearing, funny enough. And that was like um, sucking on a lemon or eating really spicy food. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. Because of the yeah. chemicals. Yeah, because it, it's a thing and I, I've heard it so many times. It's just implanted in my brain now. Because that was what our audience video was about. We made an audience video about, about stimming and stuff. That was about uh, sensory overloads and That's such, which one. is linked to anxiety. Because yep. it's your brain processing information as danger, which is the same as anxiety. It just has a different name because it's to do with how your brain has been wired forever instead of how your brain is wired in that moment. It's like the cold water thing. It's like yeah. being in, um, yeah, your body put in shock. My mind, actually, as we're talking about this, does anybody do this? When they work, do they ever have like a pattern of how they work? Do they ever like, for, for example, having a cup of tea next to them? Do you ever just get <laughs> fixed at the moment that I need coffee or I need tea? Yeah. And whenever yeah. you have black currant instead, it's like it's not the same. It's one of, yeah, I have that. And yeah. the caffeine is usually makes you more anxious. So you drink more tea and then become more anxious. I, I don't drink tea or coffee. So I'd like to know what would happen if I did start drinking tea or coffee. You just pass out. Because <laughs> do I'm don't nervous run. enough anyway as it is. Bring just, like, apparently Bring I really overthink fast. all the time. I overthink every day, apparently. So you know, I'd like to. I'd like to know what would happen if I, if I started drinking. I, I always find that funny because people told me not to drink anything caffeinated because of my anxiety and stuff. But I find that it helps because it gives me that extra speed to deal with things quicker. Instead huh. of like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like instead of like staying on the subject, it's much easier to go nope. And also have just that mo more time, more energy and time to like tackle things when they come up instead of just getting caught. Does that make sense? That's, that's I don't know if that makes of, sense out loud. No, it does. I'm that's very kind of, tired. No, that is almost going back to get the fight or flight. You're almost preempting the needing to fight or flight by, you know, just because okay, so it's, it's almost like overthinking the possible threat of danger and preempting it. Right. So here's the thing. I want to kind of think about this kind of feedback and comments thing because it's kind of reflect on... What are we enjoying about these sessions? What out of the last two sessions that can we say that I've enjoyed this? I really like this bit. Uh, opening up about my past experiences and talking about myself. That, that's what I've enjoyed. That's really good. What's helped doing that, George? George, huge. Um, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. I sort of just like, I, I just, I don't know. I just felt like it was like a really safe space to be able to just like, talk about what's on my mind and stuff and just sort of like find ways that I can cope with like stuff that I'm thinking about. Brilliant. No, absolutely spot on. Who else? Who else? What else have we enjoyed? I think what I've enjoyed the most is I've never went into these sessions 
uh, thinking about my anxiety. We all do because it's, you know, when the presentation mm -hmm. comes up, even when um, you gave us the presentation free in advance, I looked at it thinking this is all really fascinating because um, instead of, you know, learning about anxiety and about your, you know, your anxiety, you could use the advice that they give you like Alex Walker and help someone out with mm. anxiety because then you would yeah. know what to do because you use your past experience with anxiety and you can just you know metaphorically uh hold their shoulder and say and say it's okay i've been where you've been do you know what i mean yeah and you know there's light at the end of the tunnel it's just temporary do you know what i mean it made me realize that you know it's not like oh certain people have anxiety and certain people don't the anxiety is just really sensitive Sometimes people just don't want to accept the fact that they have anxiety when they clearly know that they do. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that one, Jack. And what else? What yeah. else? What else, are we doing? <laughs> what else are we enjoying? I'm not sure if this counts as enjoying, but I guess learning from something, like learning something that I didn't know existed, hmm. like the five to one method. <laughs> okay, tell us about the five to one method, or tell Joe about um, the five to one method. <laughs> Um, the five to one uh, method is basically is it's an anxiety coping mechanism um, in a way where I can't remember the order. It can vary depending on what you are. I'm more it's it's like there's a word like word. I I hate sound. There's another word, but I don't know which one is. Yeah, you're not um, okay. auditory. React. There we go. I react to sound more to distract yourself from having basically having a panic attack. Try and look at five things. Hear four things. Touch three. Um. Fight. Let's hear two things and taste one thing. I, I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> it was taste, <laughs> taste, and then smell, or smell and then taste. It was one of them. Yeah, because you repeated one of them. So it's. Because it, it almost depends on which is, like you're saying, it's almost which is your strongest one. So it's kind of, you know, five things you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can, I've lost the thoughts. Well, three things you can feel, two things it, you can taste. See, one thing feel, hear, no smell. No smell, yeah. And it's, so, I mean, it, I've, I've had it, I can never remember which order it's meant to be, but it's almost kind of, it's, it's a grounding thing by making yourself aware of the senses. And this can be not necessarily kind of things you've got next to you. It could also be remembering things, like remembering the taste of something as well. Because it's, as, as, he, as Alex pointed out in the session, the brain processes you know, emotional pain in the same way as physical pain. It, it, it processes memories in the same way as actual experience you're having at that time. It doesn't actually matter. The processes it in the same way so if you're remembering a particular feeling or smell or taste that helps ground you as well it can be hard when you're uh, some some situation it could be harder than others like if if you're in like in a crowd full of people and it's like and you like try and see five things it's like it'd be very difficult <laughs> to yeah because it's also it's almost trying to challenge yourself to kind of bring that focus in rather because yeah you, you tend yeah. to get overwhelmed with everything comes at you at the same time <laughs> and it's trying to figure out how to filter it out and sometimes if, like, if in a non-lockdown yeah. world it would be like what can you see five things you can see um person 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 five, uh, four things you can hear person talking person screaming at husband person yelling into phone uh <laughs> person snapchatting and person vlogging <laughs> We're getting a, it, such a view into your world here, Joe. <laughs> it's mostly things to distract you. It's mostly yeah. there to distract you from things that aren't mm. currently happening. Yeah, so it, it's better to get out the way of the extraneous stuff, as it were. But okay, so what haven't we enjoyed so far? The touchy subjects. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few triggering bits. Is, is, is there one to share anything that triggered them particularly? Uh, <laughs> I don't think. Just me, realize, that's a really awkward thing to say. What Just a bit a of a big list yeah. there. But, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, what do you define that? trigger as, Al? Realising I, I could have the, the, the things that were talked about in the session. I don't know, so, maybe. Actually, yeah, that's a big thing. Jack, yeah, what were you saying? Yeah. I mean, so overthinking. Like, is it a bad thing? And what you're doing is saying, oh, what about this bit here? This... When, you're, when you're talking to people about their feelings, you can't really plan what they're going to answer. <laughs> Well, no, yes. but you've also got to be careful because you've got to consider how you answer. Because today, obviously, when it's going down, there was a point mm -hmm. and um, where it's some of the stuff was getting into quite a bit of detail about self-harm. Yeah. And it, no, that was, yeah, not but everyone could cope with that. Saved us. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, it's one person. Went, no, and everyone else said, "Oh God, thank God." Um, what? No, one person nearly passed out. Um, well, yeah. just went, Let's just move on to the next bit. I yeah. was yeah. already Brilliant. having a mental breakdown at but, the time. <laughs> but the thing is, it, it's like I'm on the opposite side of that because like things changed, and I had like I knew the what slides were coming up in what order, and then that completely threw me, and then I was off for the rest of it. So like. <laughs> I had the complete opposite issue. On that subject, and here's a very serious question, because during the thing, we had to think, oh, actually, you could present it this way, and he then went onto full screen of it. How many people then regretted not being able to see how many slides through we were on the left-hand side of his yeah. point? Yeah, yeah, I thought so. There's actually a thing he could have done about that. I did suggest full screen, but he would prefer to to see our mugs yeah well yeah because that's the important because we want to be able to see reactions so then you can gauge because it's like you know if someone's turned green and is vomiting yeah we want to know oh let's move on from that subject it's yeah. kind of what is someone is on the floor. Yeah, they're but i don't know if he Probably knew i don't i don't know if like i mean he he seems like a uh, not a therapist um <laughs> professional in the sense mm. um but I feel like he could have, he, he probably knew it was going to be a touchy subject. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he did, that's but, right. I mean, we had yeah. conversations about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he knew it was going to be problematic. Uh, there's, a th there's a thing that he could have done about the PowerPoint thing. Mm. On, on, pow on PowerPoint, there's a button called Reading View, which yeah. basically puts it in presenter mode, but in a, in a window that you mm. can move around. And he could have had that on one side of the screen, still seen the faces. And then at the bottom, it says slide number of number. So you still know what slide you're on. Yeah. And he can still, like, put it on one side of the screen. But then it's it's in full screen view. I mean, bear in mind, we're, you know, a bunch of media students sitting there looking at it. You're always going to have solutions because you're dealing with this kind of technology all the time. So it's... But I think it, it, the fact that you're kind of able to suggest those things, I think you handled it re really well, personally. It's, we're, we're heading towards the end of this session now. So the big question I'm looking for is what are you all... I'm looking for something that you are going to be taking from, you know, either the first session, the second session. We've already heard about the five to one. And, you know, Alexa's saying, oh, that helped her. So we're looking for those things that you are taking from this. What are you going forward? You know, and this could be a target for over next week. It could be something that you found that really it's kind of you want there. to reflect it. But well, we've got that. What are you taking from that? I've taken from that. <laughs> anyone for anyone? Okay. Information. That's what I came for, and that's what I got out of it. <laughs> you really like having it. You like collecting that information, don't you? I like. I like knowing what I need to know about what I should know about. I mean, aside Joe's complex answer, I think. I think to be fair. Oh, it's God. more at the three things taking away from it. One, it's not going the way it needs to go. <laughs> FMP, it, it's going well for me because I can actually contact Alex and talk about and why lockdown made him anxious and everything like that. Three, uh, two, uh, I can help other people if they ever feel anxious or anything like that because I know what to do. And three. It can help me as well because I get I get very anxious when I when I want to do when I want to be even when Dad asks me a question I have a complete meltdown for no reason, and um, so it will help me understand because I always like to, when you were talking about the information side of ang uh, anxiety I always thought it's like YouTube bots isn't it when you're trying to upload <laughs> a video and it looks at the information thinking oh this has got one second of copyright it's immediately copyright claim. <laughs> Just thinking, well, it's misinformation, but I get what you mean. Do you know what I mean? So mm. I always think, like, the mind is fascinating. I'm taking more out of it. No, it's pretty, I like that analogy, actually. Basically, um, one person says we're all robots at the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> robots with emotion. Yes. Yeah. The monkeys with anxiety. Who's next? George, what, what are you going to take out of it? Um, helpful resources that will help me cope. Any particular thing that's helping you cope with this? Any, any of the, are there um, any of the things today that we talked about that... Not that I can think of. <laughs> okay, no, fine. Alexis, what, is there, um, have you got any new coping strategies from today? Not really. I think the only thing I've learned today is um, 
self-harm is still a triggering subject <laughs> even if you know yeah. bef- even when you look at it before look this, look at the slide beforehand my reaction is still the exact same <laughs> yeah you still have an issue with that it's kind of <laughs> but that's- can i clarify what i meant when i said what i was gonna say before don't use as many no's in your sentence the overthinking no. out loud now no, I want to, but what, what, I, <laughs> what, I, what I wanted to get out of it was I, I, want to, I wanted to understand my, the way my brain works more because I don't understand the way it works and it annoys me that I don't understand the way it works. So <laughs> basically the more information I get about how to manage my brain and how it works, the better off I'm going to be in general. Does that make more sense than what I said before? That's that makes, weird. That makes complete sense. I know what I know what I need to know about what I need to know, but I know that what I know what I know. So I think you know. What? I don't know. That's weird. Oh, that I put that last bit on the end to confuse you. Someone who wants information, it's like you want more information, you run, want to understand. But then also having an overwhelming brain, it's like you want yeah. more, but then you get overloaded right after. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that happens. Literally, yeah. You know, so over next week, you you basically think about what, how you've applying the stuff through the week, and then next week you can talk more about that. I think. Okay, thanks so much, guys. I shall see you next week. <laughs>